everybody. It's Miss Angie with our Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, December the 20th. It's almost Christmas. We're almost there. And I know that you're excited and I'm excited too because today during Sunday School we get to talk about this very important story. Jesus came to earth as a little baby. And today we're going to find out why and we're going to hear a little bit about the story that we probably all know very well. But I love to hear this story and I hope you enjoy it just as much. But I thought we might start with a game today. So I'm gonna let you play a little game. And this game is all about trying to figure out what present is uh, being opened. So you're gonna see on the screen um, a picture of a present and you're gonna try to figure out what it is even though not all of it is shown. So have fun playing this game. Who's ready to open some Christmas presents? Okay, so these aren't actual presents that you can hold or take home, but I still think this will be fun. You're going to see a present on the screen. You're going to have a few seconds to guess what the gift is before all of the wrapping paper is torn away and the time runs out. So, as soon as you think you know what it is inside the wrapping paper, stand up and shout out your answer. Everybody got it? All right, let's see our first present. All right, what do you think this first present could be? Remember, stand up and shout it out if you think you know. Time's up. What is it? It's a bicycle! Do you know why bicycles can't wake up on Christmas morning? Because they are too tired. Yeah, okay, moving on. Uh, what do you think this gift could be? Time's up! What is it? It's a teddy bear! Have you heard why teddy bears don't ever eat dessert? They're too stuffed. I wonder what this gift could be. Time's up. What is it? It's a basketball. Now, I can't find my basketball, but I'm sure it's around. Oh boy, another present. What do you think it could be? Time's up. What is it? It's socks. Do you know why socks are so sad? Because they are always dealing with defeat. What do you think is inside this gift? Time's up! What is it? It's cash! Do you guys know where rivers keep their money? In the river bank. Oh, I wonder what's inside this present. What is it? Oh, it's a puppy. Did you know dogs can help with home repairs? They're really good at roofing. What do you think this gift is? Time's up. What is it? It's a book. Uh, so, I read a good book the other day called Jokes from the Past. It was historical. Ooh, I wonder what this gift is. Time's up. Uh, what is it? It's shoes. 
My friend doesn't like to share his shoes with anyone. He prefers to be the sole owner. All right, this is the last one. Can you figure out what this gift is? Time's up! What is it? It's headphones! Do you know why sheep wear headphones? They like to be part of the herd. Well, that sure was fun. Merry Christmas, everybody! Friends, if you've been watching the last few weeks, you know that we're in the middle of a study about the Holy Spirit coming to the earth to be our helper and also our mission beginning. So we uh, had studied the Gospels for quite some time, uh, specifically about Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection. And now we're heading into this new unit uh, about our mission as believers to spread the gospel. But today we're gonna kinda back up just a little bit because it's Christmas and we can't have Christmas without studying the story of Jesus being born. So I'm gonna share that story with you in just a little bit. I'm actually gonna use a book that I used to read to my kids when they were little. It was my favorite uh, way to tell the Christmas story. So I'm gonna read that to you in just a little bit. But before I do, this is a story that we know very well, most of us. So I wanted to kind of dig a little deeper and talk about something maybe that we don't know a whole lot about because we are all about learning in Sunday school. Things that we don't know, there are lots of things that Miss Angie does not know about the Bible yet. So that's why I have to study it and I have to dig in and really pray about it and ask God to show me what he wants me to learn. And today what I want us to learn is um, that the Gospels, we know that there are four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and each of those books were written by those people, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what I want you to realize is that a lot of the same stories are in each gospel, but it's kind of like when you see something happen, you witness an event that happens, the way you tell it might be different than the way your friend who saw the same event tells it, because we see things differently, different perspectives different points of view. And that's the exact same way that the Gospels are written. They're written from the perspective of the person that's writing it. And even though God inspired all of the words in this Bible, the way that the men in the Gospels told the same stories was a little different. And I think that's pretty interesting. Today, I want to talk about the Gospel of John because John had a very unique way of talking about Jesus coming to earth. And so I want you to focus on this word today. I want you to really think about this word. You're gonna be amazed at what this word is. Yeah. The word is word. Do you know what the word word means? That's kind of an interesting question. Did you know that Jesus is called the word? And I want to read uh, this, the uh, verse where we can find that. It's John, the Gospel of John, as we've just been talking about. John chapter 1, and this is what it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was the word, word, a lot in that verse. And I'm going to let you see a video that will tell you, uh, explain a little bit about what that means. Because that can be a confusing verse for kids and adults. Uh, so take a look at this. Hey kids, have you ever heard of a guy named Jesus? You probably have. We talk about him all the time, and he's the most famous person in the world. More famous than Julius Caesar, King Tut, or even George Washington. In fact, people around the world celebrate his birthday every year. Christmas! But did you know Jesus' story didn't just start on Christmas? 
Nope, it started a long time before then. In the book of John, it gives us an idea of how long Jesus has been around. Jesus existed even before he was born on earth. Don't believe me? Then let's take a look at our memory verse. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. That verse is talking about Jesus. Have you ever heard somebody call the Bible the Word of God, or just the Word? That's because the Bible is God's Word. It's His truth given to us. And Jesus is the person that represents that truth. So I call Him the Word. And here's another thing we learned from our memory verse. Jesus is actually God himself. That's probably really confusing. Who is Jesus and who is God? Well, Jesus is God, God the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, all at one time. The adult word for this is Trinity, and it might be kind of confusing to understand. But it's still true. How do we know it's true? Because it's in the Bible. And it's okay if we don't understand it, because it shows that God is bigger than our understanding. But the important thing to remember is that Jesus is God, and he was there before the beginning. God created everything through Jesus. Let's look at another verse from John. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. When you think of creation, you probably think of old gray hair God the Father creating everything. But it was actually all made through Jesus. He spoke some words and everything came into existence. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. This is another thing we learned from John, why Jesus came to earth. See, the world around us can be a dark and scary place sometimes. And it can make us feel frightened and hopeless. And God didn't want us to feel like that, so he sent Jesus. He came into a dark, broken world and gave us light and hope. And that is why Jesus is the most famous person of all. So next time you hear somebody talking about George Washington or King Tut, tell them about Jesus. So now I'm ready to read the story of Christmas to you. As I said before, uh, this is one of the books that I used to read to my little guys when they were little. And uh, it's a familiar story, but I love to hear it. A long time ago, God called for the angel Gabriel. God told Gabriel to go to the city of Nazareth and find a young woman called Mary. At first, Mary was frightened, but Gabriel told her not to be afraid. God sent me, he said. God has chosen you to be the mother of his baby. His name will be Jesus. Mary smiled. I'm happy to do whatever God wants, she replied. Mary had promised to marry a carpenter called Joseph. Joseph heard that Mary was going to have a baby, and he began to worry about what he should do. God sent an angel to visit Joseph in a dream. Don't worry anymore, the angel told him. This is God's baby, and when he is born, you are to call him Jesus. Mary and Joseph were waiting for the baby to be born when an order came from the emperor. Everyone was to pay him some money. They had to go back to the city their family came from and pay the money there. Joseph's family came from Bethlehem, so he and Mary had to pack their things and leave Nazareth. Can you imagine expecting a baby and having to travel all that way? I bet she was so tired. When Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem, they found grandfathers and grandmothers, uncles and aunts, fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers and cousins. Everyone had come to pay the emperor. It was crowded. All the places to stay were full. Mary and Joseph knocked on every door, but the only place left was a stable where animals were kept. While they were there, the baby Jesus was born. 
Mary wrapped him carefully and laid him in a manger full of soft hay. The stable was not very far from some fields where shepherds were looking after their sheep. Suddenly the sky lit up. High above was an angel. He said, I bring you wonderful news. Tonight in Bethlehem, the Savior of the world is born. And he told the shepherds how they could find the baby. Suddenly the whole sky was full of angels singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. When the angels had flown back flown back into heaven, the shepherds left their sheep and hurried off to look for the stable where Jesus was. There they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. A long way away there were three wise men who saw a star. They knew it was a sign sign that someone very important had been born and they followed the star until it stopped over the stable the wise men went in and saw Jesus with his mother Mary they gave the baby presents of gold and sweet smelling spices called frankincense and myrrh and above up above the stable, all the angels sang as the star shone down. The Son of God had been born. So most of the time when you finish a book, you say the end. But guys, this story was just the beginning. It was the beginning of uh, the story of our rescue as people. God sent His Son Jesus to the earth to be a baby, to live a perfect life, um, but then to die, to take the punishment up for our sin. So the story does not stop there. Uh, in fact, it's just the beginning of that awesome, wonderful story. I hope that your Christmas is so extra special. I hope that you have time to talk with your family about what Christmas really means. I hope that um, you can share with your family what it means when John said uh, the Word became flesh. He was talking about Jesus. Jesus, uh, part of the Trinity, came to earth. Uh, to be among us and what a precious gift that was that allowed us to have eternal life. Uh, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great week. I hope you get to spend lots of fun time with your family and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.